Hello! So I recently shared my over 40 weight loss journey here on my channel, how I lost roughly 20 pounds in around four months. I got a lot of questions from you about what I ate to lose the weight and how I'm maintaining that loss, what I'm eating now. Because like me, you want something that is going to be a long-term change, but allow you to have balance too. But many of you have also realized that it's just not as easy as we get a little bit older as it was when we were younger. I used to be able to just cut back on my eating and drop a little weight or move a little bit more, eat a little bit less, and it's just not working the same way that it used to. So if you haven't seen that original video, I will have it linked up in a card and down below so you can go catch that because I share my background, what worked for me, what didn't, and what finally clicked and why it did. And I do touch on eating, but I, I think I need to do it a little bit more, which is why we're doing this video. A lot of you also asked me about intermittent fasting and if what I did is keto or if it's very similar to keto. So I'm gonna to touch on that in this video too. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new and let's go ahead and get into what I ate to lose weight and maintain weight loss over 40. Now, before I really get into this, just know I do not eat perfectly 100% of the time. I'm gonna share all of this with you and you're gonna see some foods and go, hmm, what is that all about? I need some convenience foods thrown in here on the weekends. Sometimes I eat other things. For me, it's about balance and this helps give me balance. So if you've seen my original video, you may recall the first two weeks look a little bit different than the rest. I personally need this first two week period as a reset period. I have been a lifetime sugar addict basically. So this initial two week period that I'm about to go through is optional if you are great with self-control. If you don't have sugar cravings, you may not need it. But it allows me to completely curve my sugar cravings and then I'm able to listen to my body so much easier and it makes everything else so much more manageable whereas with other weight loss methods Noom, Weight Watchers, counting calories just whatever it was my sugar cravings would get me every single time. Now I have to give the disclaimer as with any diet nutrition health fitness video I am not a professional I'm not a nutritionist I can only share what's worked for me personally what works for me may not work for you. Okay so for the first two weeks which is such a short period of time in the whole scheme of things. I cut any foods that spike blood sugar or insulin, which is actually what keeps those cravings coming around and makes it harder to lose weight. It's what causes those afternoon slumps to, you know, you get tired in the afternoon, so then you, you know, eat or drink something, you get a little bit of energy and then you come down again. It's just that roller coaster. So I cut those foods, which I'll go into in a minute. I'm gonna talk about what I cut and then tell you what I eat. And then the foods I eat are the foods that keep blood sugar levels very very even and keep me satiated. So I'm cutting starchy carbs, which includes anything with wheat and white flour. We're talking cookies, cakes, crackers, bread, cereal, pasta, all of that stuff. Some grains. I have a, a note on here as I go through the foods that I do eat. Gluten, which kind of goes into the starchy carbs with wheat and refined flour. Starchy vegetables like peas, potatoes, carrots, and corn, anything with refined added sugars. And I also personally cut fruit during the first two weeks because I'm trying to get rid of sugar cravings and that's sugar, even though it's natural sugar. I'm not someone that thinks fruit is evil. I do add it back in, but during these first two weeks, it just helps me cut my sugar cravings a little bit faster. So during the first two weeks, and actually always, I try to eat foods and meals that consist of complex carbs, good healthy fats, and proteins. Every time I eat something, I try to make sure it has all three of those things so that I stay fuller longer and it's just really balanced with complex carbs, protein and good fat. I'm a coffee drinker, so when we're talking about breakfast, sometimes the afternoon, I like my coffee. I normally will drink it black in the mornings because I like our brand of coffee and I like to drink it black. I will throw in a scoop or two of collagen powder. I'll link the one that I normally use in the description box down below the video as well as other products that I reference in this video in case you're interested in those. I had someone ask me about the collagen powder in the last video. I like it for my skin, hair, and nails 
general health as well as joints. I just feel like it just kind of helps me out. I notice a difference when I don't incorporate it. So I usually throw in at least a scoop. Now when it comes to the food part of breakfast, if I'm eating breakfast, I will either cook a couple of eggs or an egg and a couple of egg whites or egg beaters. Yes, egg beaters. I know they're not the healthiest thing, but they get the job done and they're quick. If I have time, I'll scramble them or make an omelet or sometimes if I'm in a hurry, I will stick them in a bowl with some nonstick spray and put them in the microwave. No matter what type of egg I'm using, it works. If I'm in the mood, I'll add a little bit of cheese, maybe some avocado or spinach. Sometimes I'll make an omelet. It just depends on my mood. I think that's one reason why I procrastinated doing this video so much because I just kind of eat what I'm in the mood for. I don't really have a set meal plan. So with the egg, I will add a piece or two of turkey or veggie sausage or a piece of Canadian bacon and I'm good. Now as a lifetime breakfast eater, first thing in the morning, it's kind of weird for me to say if I eat breakfast. I'm not quite sure when it happened, but I'm just able to kind of listen to my body now in the morning. I don't wake up famished to where I have to eat first thing. I just eat when I'm hungry in the morning if it's 10, 10 30 I'll eat sometimes it's noon sometimes it's not until 1 or 1 30. I would say more times than not I don't eat breakfast in the morning but I don't really intermittent fast I, I don't consider myself to be someone who intermittent fasts because I just don't really pay attention to eating windows or structure or anything like that I just eat when I'm hungry I'm talking about lunch and dinner as one you can do this for lunch or dinner I mean technically you could have had breakfast for lunch or dinner too so I typically eat a good portion of protein chicken, seafood, eggs, or, or lean meat of some kind. And I'm not counting calories. I know it used to be the size of protein was like a deck of cards or your fist or something like that. I would say it's probably six, seven, maybe even eight ounces, probably double that amount. And I'm eating a lot of non-starchy vegetables, complex carbs, broccoli, spinach, green beans, cauliflower, squash, zucchini, leafy greens. If you want to eat a salad. So you do want to include some kind of good fat. You know, if you're eating a, a fish, that may be in the fish. Now, if you're eating a, a big salad, you definitely want to make sure that you have a good fat in there, avocado, some kind of, you know, extra virgin olive oil. It helps the nutrients from the complex carbs, your leafy greens, be absorbed when you include a really good fat. Stir fry is a great option to eat. If you're eating sushi during this period, I recommend getting it with no rice. There are great options you can get with no rice. There was a night where Michael cooked burgers and I just took the bun off and I had a big salad with my burger. I feel like when people are thinking about this phase, they think it's so restrictive. There are really a lot of options to eat that are so healthy and so good and they give you a lot of variety. Just when you stop and think about all the, the meat and seafood choices that there are out there, you can really combine things in so many different ways for dinner and lunch between salads and stir fries and just different proteins and vegetables. Now, even though I eliminate white rice and certain starchy grains during this phase, there are a few that I will eat. I, I would call them more complex grains like quinoa and oats and things like that. And to keep more variety during this phase, I do incorporate some daily harvest bowls because it, it helps keep my lunches more interesting. And it also helps me get in more vegetables than I would normally get. I'm just not that creative when it comes to making up meals. You can obviously spend the time and put this kind of thing together yourself, whip up a bowl or, you know, do your own kind of vegetable grain kind of thing. I'm just not someone that's going to do that. So having daily harvest available as an option for me is just such a great thing. So I'll list here the ones that I like for this particular phase because of their ratios or their content. I open it up more after the two weeks. Some typical snacks for me during this first phase, I like to have an ounce of nuts, usually almonds, boiled eggs, jerky. I try to stick to the unflavored, although teriyaki is my favorite, but during this phase, I stick to the plain. I enjoy cut up vegetables, specifically those little peppers that come in the pack. I enjoy those dipped in hummus. String cheese is another snack I reach for. Now we're talking about two weeks of our lives here. And for me, this was very doable. 
However, there are times when we need something very, very convenient. I have a couple of protein bar kind of substitutes and a shake that I incorporate now that if you're in a pinch during this first two week phase, I don't think they're going to break you. I don't think it's going to ruin you. I wouldn't use them as a crutch, but I'm going to have them linked down below just in case you need something for your purse for an emergency when an ounce of nuts isn't going to cut it. You need a little more sustenance than that. And you know, it's better than going going to the vending machine and getting a candy bar, that kind of thing. So I'll have those linked down below because we are talking about real life and sometimes you do need better options that you can keep on hand in your purse, in a tote at work. So I wanted to keep that in mind for you when I was putting this together. Now, before I get into the foods we're gonna add back in, I have to make a couple of notes about the reset period. You're probably gonna be feeling pretty bad a few days in. It's perfectly normal because sugar is addictive and we're not consuming it anymore, our body is basically going through a withdrawal period. If you can get through the two week period, you are golden. I actually came across an article from the Cleveland Clinic that I found really interesting that supports this whole, you know, sugar thing. I'll link it down below if you want to check it out after this video too. Once the two weeks is over, you're going to feel some things you may not have felt in a long time and that you'll continue to feel in a more exaggerated way the longer you eat better. I mean, all of this is very sound. What we're doing, eating increased protein, increased complex carbs, and good fats. It's decreasing inflammation and doing really good things for our bodies. You're probably going to be feeling less brain fog, more energy. You'll probably drop a little bit of weight. If you have stomach issues, those may be a little bit better too. I mean, I can't promise any of this. Everyone's going to be different, but getting rid of all the junk it contributes to a lot of the things that make us feel bad. It is very very important during this whole thing. I mean, in life in general to decrease our hunger and stress hormones to drink an adequate amount of water every day and get an adequate amount of sleep. So I did want to make that note, especially during the reset period, you definitely want to be drinking a lot of water. Now I do also talk about supplements in the other video that I have linked down below and up in a card if you want to know what I personally take. Now after the two week reset is over, I'm adding back in some foods. I still make sure that my meals for the most part consist of a decent amount of protein, six ounces, roughly at least, complex carbs and good fats. So you may be asking how it's different from the reset phase. I will eat starchy vegetables in moderation. I'll have potatoes and carrots and corn. I just make sure I limit those because those do spike blood sugar. I add back in fruit, but I try to have it maybe once or twice a day, or I'll eat a daily harvest meal that does have fruit in it. I eat oats and grains a little more often. Popcorn as a snack isn't off limits like it was in the reset phase. So I still don't actively eat white rice, but I'm not going to stay away from sushi with white rice on it because I love sushi. I live in New Orleans. I'm going to have gumbo. I'm going to have jambalaya. Editing Stephanie here. I was going through the video and realized I left something small out, but I feel like it's kind of important. If you're making progress and feeling better, having eliminated refined sugars, starchy carbs, and gluten, but maybe you want a sandwich or a burger or cereal, yet you don't want to feel bad or lose your progress. I mean, it happens. We're human. Sometimes we do want those things. I'm going to list my favorite breads and a couple of cereals that I've come across that are pretty decent down below. All gluten-free items are not created equally. I've gone through some pretty bad breads, so I just wanted to share my favorites with you in case you're wanting to maintain that way of eating long-term. I'm going to make sure that the bulk of my meals consist of what we talked about earlier in the reset phase because that's just so much healthier. I'm also still staying away from drinks that contain sugars. I don't think I talked about this in the reset phase actually, so I guess I need to address it now. I don't drink diet sodas, regular sodas, juices, anything like that. I pretty much stick to water, unsweet tea, coffee. I'll add in stevia because it's a natural sweetener. I just try to stay away from aspartame and things like that. That's a personal choice. When we're talking about something spiking blood sugar, red wine is a better choice than white. Clear liquor is going to be a better choice than dark liquor. So vodka would be a better choice, for example. So on a daily basis, I stay away from refined sugar, 
refined wheat and white flour, gluten. It's basically pizza, bread, crackers, cookies, cakes, pasta, also beer and ice cream. All of those things, I mean, they all sound so much fun, but they cause a lot of inflammation in our bodies, which in turn causes a lot of problems. It's not really just about weight loss, especially not as we get older. I touched on that in the other video, so I'm not gonna go down that rabbit hole here. And I'm not saying I never eat those things. I try not to actively eat them on a daily basis. Now, if there's a party, if there's you know a cake somewhere, or if pizza is there, I'm not saying I'll never have it. I'm not perfect. I will have it here and there, but now because my taste buds are a little bit different because I did that reset and just ate so differently, I can eat occasional things and not spiral out of control with cravings and just need more and more and more. And that's how I used to be. So I had a few people ask me about cravings during the reset period specifically, since we're still purging that sugar, we're probably still gonna have cravings. What helped me when I was just having cravings but I wasn't hungry was either brushing my teeth or popping in a piece of sugar-free gum or drinking a cup of hot tea. Those are three things that helped me when I had cravings and just wasn't hungry. They just eliminated them. I had several people tell me that what I was doing was keto. I am not a keto expert, but I did look into it to see if it was, if it was different. Everything I read said that keto was low carb, high fat. I even saw ratios of fat, carbs. What I'm doing now, what I did in the reset phase is not high fat. It's lower carb simply because the types of carbs you're eating are complex carbs, but the protein and fat are pretty balanced unless you just choose for them not to be, but it's not high fat. Also, from what I understand with keto, you avoid all fruit, beans, rice, potatoes, even sweet potatoes. Now during the first phase, the first two weeks, I didn't eat those things, but I've incorporated them back in. And so it is not keto, but even during the first phase, when I eliminated those, again, the ratios are different. So I just wanted to address that in case you're wondering how the reset phase was different or the same as keto. I put off doing this video for quite a while because I, I thought I was gonna be kind of scattered and I may have been. I don't follow a specific eating plan. I'm not someone who plans out all my meals. I just kind of eat what I eat. I'm not 100% perfect with my eating. Sometimes I use convenience foods, but I wanted to give you some examples of things that you could do. So I hope that this gave you that. If you found it helpful and enjoyable, I would love it if you would give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.